Good morning, everyone. Let's try that again. Good morning, everybody. Look at the person next to you and say, it's so wonderful to see you here. To say that you actually got to look at somebody. Lah. Okay. Now, we did it last week. Now, look at somebody else and say, you must be a genius. Because you're sitting next to me. Okay. <laughs> we, we, you know, this morning, it's a great celebration time. It's also the installation of Pastor Fusing as associate pastor. Are we happy about this, hey? Church, come on. And, uh, you know, uh, as Feeling was saying, we, we start the whole series on Revelation, yeah? But we're going to do it on two tracks, okay? I just want to say to you. We, the, the whole is the Bible study. So that means we, we look at it a bit more deeper. Uh, not that the preaching will be less, okay? But it's going to be more inspirational. And uh, so we, we want, the focus of the entire thing is Jesus. Okay? So if you look at the book of Revelation, if you look at people and countries and whatever not, you're going to miss the truth. It's all about Jesus, yeah? In, the, in fact, the first verse says the revelation of Jesus. That means we start with that, we end with that, yeah? So that's very important. But, well, come for the next exciting thing. Second week of May. Second week of what? Three. That means in about two weeks' time, she, I, I'm sorry, I want to emphasize this, this uh, information. The service will not be here. We'll probably be in a different hall because we want to accommodate everybody. And we're going to celebrate, we're going to do two things together. We're going to celebrate Father and Mother's Day together. Because, you know, one day Mother's Day, one day Father's Day, then the mothers and fathers fight because I'm, your gift was better than mine. I mean, no, you know. And how, somehow have you realized the mothers always get better gifts? Yeah. Uh, see, you even you know that. Yeah, yeah. So men, cheer for me, okay? Yeah. Uh, okay, come on, yeah. <laughs> but show up also now, huh? Uh, cheer already. So, <laughs> so remember, we're going to do both. Par- we're going to do the parents' day. We're going to honor mothers. We're going to honor dads. But above all, we're going to launch into where we are going as a church, all right? So very important date. Uh, even if you're getting married on that day, cancel the marriage. Anyway, I have to do your marriage. So cancel the marriage and, and be here on that Sunday and you'll get more information. Okay, for the exciting thing, okay? We, I, we have a dear friend of ours, Pastor Benedict Rajan. Come on, we can give him a better welcome, yeah? Um, over the last few years, you know, we've, we've been uh, getting to know each other much better. But they, he and the wife and the family do a tremendous work in, in, in Johor. So he flew up last night. So, so don't, don't go, make him go through trials and tribulations, you know. And uh, he pastors the church called Calvary City Life, an amazing church in, in JB. But also they, do, they have what you call uh, Pusat Kebajikan Calvary. They have drug centers, uh, they have orphanages, they've got, le- they've got you know, uh, farms. You talk about impacting in 11 different countries and traveling extensively. Guys, we are in for a treat, amen? amen. So I'm doing it for you, okay? No, amen. Now anyway, uh, and, and also one of the great uh, things about what God has done in my dear brother's life is also a great prophetic apostolic anointing. So, so today, we not only just going to have uh, Pastor Phil Singh and his wife up here to be prayed for, uh, but a few other people that I would like to be prayed for, and as the Lord leads him, and then we're also going to have a time of communion. So let's believe together for an amazing time in the presence of the Lord to hear God's word and to let God speak deep into our hearts and say, God, I want to run the next lap well for you. Let's put our hands together and welcome Pastor Benedict. Thank you. Thank you, my Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Pastor Elijah, sit in there. Your beautiful wife, Petrina, she's downstairs, I think. Her lovely two children, of course. And uh, as what Pastor Elijah said in the last uh, couple of months, uh, from last year, I think, we drew closer as a friend, and we can talk things, and uh, we can call ourselves Pa, 
P A K P A, <laughs> Indonesian term. You know? And thank you for this opportunity. Really appreciate this. And um, I like to pray with um, every one of you if you can stay. Well, I like to pray. I like to just minister to you. Uh, if you can stay, some of them cannot stay, no? Because their lunch is cooking and <laughs> someone is waiting, you know? Praise God. Isn't God good? Come on, let me just pray with you. Father, we thank you this morning for a lovely atmosphere of worship. Thank you for the worship team that has put their talents and anointing together. They created such an atmosphere where we can just literally embrace the presence of God. Thank you for this great church, covenant, um, new covenant church, new covenant community church. That's right. Father, just bless the leadership as we will minister to them later. Father, those that are standing at the crossroad of their decisions or those that are standing at the weakest point of their faith, Lord, I pray that you will just minister to them. Thank you, dear Father. Thank you, God. For this day, the Lord will have this known to you. As in Psalm 16, as Psalm 16, the Lord will say this to you. Psalm 16 was 4, 5, 6. For my line has fallen in your life in perfect places. In a perfect place. You are at the right time, at the right place, doing the right thing, saith the Lord. Therefore, be encouraged. Don't listen to the lie of the devil. Father, we just commit all of them into your hands. And let there be a release of your prophetic apostolic anointing over the church. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I'm 67 years old. I've got, um, better introduce now. I've got two lovely girls. One of them is an associate pastor together with me. And um, they all have got uh, so much of responsibilities that, that ma they look forward for Monday. We just anchored a new project called uh, the Rohingya Community Hub. Rohingya. And uh, we are officially recognized as a UNR. UNHCR Center. And uh, that has taken a toll on them too. We have just rented a huge building doing educations, women instruction, health, Medicare, all kinds of things, you know. So that will be our 27th social work. From the cradle to the coffin, we have got ministries <laughs> from babies right up to old folks. Praise God. I've invited Pastor Elijah to come and take a look at the works. I'm sure he will come and speak to our pastors. Okay? Praise God. Isn't God good? Amen. Now, this morning when I woke up, you know, woke up, like you woke up in the early hours of the morning, the Lord just gave me a prophetic bubbling. How many of you know what prophetic bubbling is? Okay? It's just spontaneous, you know? bubbles up okay and uh, i said god uh, is this for the church he said this is for everyone who is part of the new covenant community church is it new covenant community church i like the word community because my friend helped us to register with necf no more calvary city church two years down the road we're called calvary community church you guys thank you sir you know, and uh, there were, that was a quick um, registration. No? Praise God. I like to give this word, okay? I like to give this word, prophetic word, Psalms 18. Psalms 18 was 31 to 36. And I want you to receive it personally. And this is for you, for your family, for your children, for the church. And this is, this is the abiding participation of God in your life. The abiding participation of God in your life. You know, uh, let me read from verse 31. Verse 31. For who is God except the Lord? 
And who is a rock except our God? It is God who arms me with strength. Okay? It's God who arms me with strength and makes my way perfect. My way perfect. He makes my feet like a deer feet, deer's feet, and sets me on high places. Wow, victory from breakthrough to breakthrough, from anointing to anointing, from favor to favor. And then he teaches my hand to make war so that my arms can bend a bow of bronze. You have also given me the shield of your salvation. Your right hand has helped me, uh, held me up. Your gentleness has made me great. You, I like this, you have enlarged my power under my feet. So my feet did not sleep. Okay, now God, uh, this is of the, of the sermon, God is going to lead you and the church to into four definite seasons. Number one, uh, it's going to be uh, a season of acceleration. Acceleration. That which has been delayed will no longer be delayed. That which has been slowed down will no longer be slowed down. That's number one. If you are looking for scriptures, Isaiah 60 was 21, 22. Number two, the Lord will take this new covenant community church into an into a season of restoration that which is not completed will be completed as in philippians chapter 1 and verse 6 number 3 the lord will take this church new community church into a season of restitution over the years, things have been lost. Over the things, things have, 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 have been, you know, lost opportunities, lost this, and God will just bring it back to you. He will restore back to you. Joel chapter 2 was 20 right up to 25. What the canker worm, the palmer worm, the caterpillar has devastated, the Lord would restore it back to you. Praise God. Can somebody say man, please? Finally, the last season that the Lord will take this church through, we're going to launch the church in, with a vision. I think so, okay? And uh, is, is a season of rebuilding. Amen. Rebuilding. You know, Jeremiah, the 31th, 31st chapter was four. I will rebuild you. I will rebuild. Build you, and then you'll be let forth like a virgin with gladness and joy. Come on, put your hands together, give Jesus a glory. And that's what it means. That's what it means that I have enlarged your your path. I've enlarged your path. Can somebody say amen, please? Yes. Father, in the name of Jesus, I release this prophetic apostolic anointing over the launch of the church and the launch of their ministries dear father oh god in the name of jesus over pastor elijah and his wife and over every pastors that are going to be serving under them father i just pray such a tremendous prophetic apostolic anointing will be released thank you dear father in jesus name we pray amen pastor elijah one of the things that you will begin to finally um, uh, enjoy uh, is going to be loyalty. Finally, it's going to happen. You have been, you know what I mean, right? Okay, pastors, you know. Okay, now, can I share with you a testimony before I get to the word? If you're okay with me, just wave your hand, please. Okay, everybody, this happened about... Um, 11 months ago, okay? Now, 11 months. And I want to encourage you, when God gives you a breakthrough, he gives you a complete breakthrough. I go a bit at the back, so you don't need to look up like that, okay? Okay? Now, you know what? He gives us complete breakthrough. Okay? How many of you believe that? Say amen, please. Amen. In Hokkien, it's Pau <laughs> Kaliao. That's everything, you know? Uh, if, if my daughter comes... 
She can come. She's on the way, I think. Um, now, you know what? Pau Kaliao, everything, you know? And uh, I, I, if, if you're sitting here with a sense, and uh, you, you need a breakthrough, uh, God doesn't just give you one breakthrough. He gives you breakthroughs. Amen. Come on, plurality. Amen. Everybody say plurality. plurality. Isn't that wonderful? Come on, isn't that wonderful? I like to read. Now, I don't know if this... Uh, is it scriptural? Yes, it is. Remember Pastor Elijah 2 Samuel, chapter 5, verse 20. David inquired of the Lord, and the Lord said, Go, deal with the Philistines. And then he comes back with this victory. In 2 Samuel 5, 20. I like this. I really like this. You know? And it says here, So David went to Baal, Prezim. Baal Prezim means um, waters, breakthroughs of water, or the Lord of breakthrough, the Lord. So orang yang in charge atas breakthrough, the Robosan, in charge. It says here, um, and David defeated them there. And he said, the Lord has broken through my enemies. Wow. Broken through my enemies before me. Like the breakthrough of water. Pusu feng sui. Not feng sui. Breakthroughs of water. You know, remember Isaiah 59 and verse 19. The Lord, right? The Lord will, the enemy will come. I like to put a comma. And like a flood. Enemy cannot be a flood. Enemy is a trickling, you know. Guilt upon guilt, all right? But like a flood, the Lord will raise up uh, the standard against it. Isn't that wonderful? Amen. Okay? Now, if you, you want more scriptures on this, I can give you. But now, let's finish this. Therefore, he called that place, Baal Prezim, simply means uh, the Lord of breakthroughs. Now, this lady, I, I'm going to give you a testimony of Evelyn. She's the one who sent the testimony to me. Just sent me two weeks ago, you know. And I, I don't know her. She's from Kota Kinabalu. Okay? She got this number from, I think, one of the guys from Philip, Pastor Philip Lynch's church. And then called. And both husband and wife were not Christians. They were not Christians. And they heard that I can pray for sick. You know, all of us can pray for sick. Those of you who are not sick can pray for sick. If you're sick, you pray for yourself. You no? Know? That's the truth. Word. Take your anointing, anoint yourself and pray. You know? Now, look at me, please. And the Evelyn Tan, Michael Tan, Evelyn Tan. And uh, she, number one, as soon as we engage in praying, she went through a massive deliverance online. Can you imagine how uncomfortable I'm feeling? Do you know? And this is a husband and her a video call. And she goes, you know, she goes crazy. You know? She goes crazy. And the husband don't know what to do. I just let them to the Lord. <laughs> I said, hold her. You just hold her. I'll do all the talking. <laughs> you just say one thing. The blood of Jesus. Just say that. Don't say anything else. Don't call your wife's name. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. The blood of... They keep saying that. No? What is that? You just say. Don't worry. You just say. And then about... Less than 15 minutes later, thank God for, for you know, streaming, live streaming, huh? video. you know, the Wi-Fi didn't disturb her. And she got, got free, set free, you know. And then she told me why, then she told me why she wants uh, me to pray for her. Let me read. Yeah, from Evelyn Dunn, glory to God. I'll send you the baby's photo, Okay. This one must be verified. Cannot be coming and telling story in Kuala Lumpur. Especially in Sentul, no? <laughs> I want to thank God for using me, my name, to heal my high arch right foot. You know, I think like this, I don't, I don't know what it is. I haven't seen it. Last year, I called him to ask him. You see, the deliverance, you don't know what happened actually. So don't put that, I said, okay? And then she said, I called him to ask him 
to pray over me and I was very grateful that he immediately said uh, yes. In fact, I was telling him I got pain in my right leg and uh, he knew one of my legs was shorter than the other. He prayed over uh, through the WhatsApp video and God worked powerfully through him. My husband held my legs while I sat on the chair. My right, right leg grew. I no longer have high arch foot and both my feet are of the same length. Wow. Come on. Some, let's give Jesus the glory. Okay. And then, do not, then the word of knowledge. That one will operate right now here. Okay? <laughs> the message. If I ask you questions, if you don't, don't answer me later, I can pray for you. Okay? Could be a word of knowledge. He then asked me if I have children. Okay? That's a word of knowledge. I realize that she has, they are married, but no children. I, a word of knowledge. I, I replied, I didn't have, and he asked, if I wanted to have children, I responded in affirmative and he immediately prayed for me and my husband. It was a miracle because I remember I already had my ovulation cycle and so I waited for the next one. However, my menses didn't come. After a month, I went for checkup. Praise the Lord, I was pregnant. pregnant. Since I was 42 years already, there's a risk of having Down syndrome children. You know, God doesn't make a mistake. How many of you know God doesn't make a mistake? Look what happened. I requested again. She called me. After that, she has been harassing me anyway. You know, I called me and prayed. She called, pray for small, small things. I'll scared. You know, pray. And then I referred them to Pastor Philip. You know, and then pray for me to have a normal child. He did. And he assured me, word of knowledge again, assured me that all would be well. Please don't go and poke here, poke there, and take blood from the baby to check. You know? Hence, I didn't take the prenatal tests. Now look at this. When I was in my 34 weeks of pregnancy, the doctor requested me to be warded immediately as he discovered my, that my baby size and head were smaller. I wanted to perform a C-section the following week. They suspected several root causes, including Down syndrome. Okay, doctors do their job, right? I know. I asked my daughter, she's a medical doctor, she also said the same thing. Otherwise, if anything happened, the patients will, you know. So, now look at this. This is what God does. He who, being confident of this thing, Philippians chapter 1 verse 6, being confident of this thing, he who has started a good work in you will finish it in the days of our Lord Jesus. Come on, you can put your hands together, give Jesus a glory. Wow. You know what? Last January, I gave birth to a healthy, normal baby, even though she is prematured. And I wish to thank God, and I want to give all God the glory. Come on. I'll send you the photo. She's about, I think, two months old right now. I tell you, she's a beauty of all beauty. She named her one, Zoe, I think. I'm not very sure. Praise God. Okay, let me get back to the message today. Are you okay? Okay, we are familiar with one another? Please don't get too familiar, okay? Now, please turn with me to Isaiah, the 44th chapter, verses 3 to 5. And I promise you, I won't take too much of your time, okay? Isaiah 44, verses 3 to 4. And Isaiah prophetically says of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Everybody say, outpouring of the Holy Spirit. When I prayed and asked the Lord for a message for this uh, morning, the Lord told me, son, fullness of the Spirit. Fullness of the Spirit. You know, my experience all these years in planting churches, in opening up missions hub overseas, and in doing homes, you know what? Very simple, Pastor Elijah. When the fullness of God comes, Everything falls in the right place. Your sound system, your media guy, your music, your worship leader, that which is rebelling will no longer rebel. Serious. Well, that's, that's the message God gave me. And I'm preaching. I'm obeying God and preaching. It's the same with you. Every one of us must desire for the fullness of the Spirit of God in our life. And I tell you, when the fullness comes, I'll tell you in a short while what happens. Isaiah 44 verses 3 and 4. For I will pour out 
water on who is thirsty. How many of you are thirsty this morning? And the streams, I saw your hand, and streams on the dry ground. There must be more than this. I'll pour out my spirit on your offspring, children, and my blessings on your descendants. Come on, children's children, descendants. And they will spring up among the grass like willows by the streams of water. I entitled this short message this morning, The Signs of the Last Days. The Signs of the Last Days. Are you here with me? We are living in the last of the last days. Look at the war between Russia and Ukraine. Look how U.S. is messing up the whole thing right now. Guys, really? You know, look at the famine we are going through. The famine of finance. And I want to say this, the famine of food will follow. We have a famine of finance right now. We have a famine of job right now. You know, we have a famine of loyal people right now. Seriously, you know. And, and in Matthew 24, 3, Matthew 24, 3, the disciples came and asked Jesus this question. Now, as Jesus sat on Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, Tell us, when will these things be? What are these things? That what will be the sign of your coming? What is the sign of your coming at the end of the age? The two things. Matthew 24 verse 3. Two things. What, what is this? The end of, of the world as well as the sign of your coming. And then Jesus, look at me everybody. Then Jesus goes ahead from Matthew the 24th chapter verses 4 to 12. Now look at me. He gives all the negative signs. Right? He goes on by saying this, be careful, there will, there will come some to deceive you, number one. Then he goes on to say, there will be rumors of war, there will be war. Then he goes on to say, kingdom will rise again, kingdom, nations against nations, right? And then he said, there will be famine, there will be earthquake in various places, there will be pestilence, the pandemic. And then he goes on to say, people's love for God will grow cold. They will betray one another and they will be offended easily. And then he says in Matthew 24 and verse 8, he says, this is the beginning of sorrow. Are you here with me? Come on. The Bible doesn't downplay the difficult times that we're going to go through. Are you here with me? Come on, somebody shout amen, please. Amen. Are you here with me? Yes. But in the midst of all this, look at me. In the midst of all this, just as in Isaiah 60, verse 1 and 2, Arise, shine, for your light has come, for the glory of the Lord has risen upon thee. Though darkness shall cover the earth, deep darkness over the people, lawlessness, but the Lord will arise over you and his glory will be seen upon you and the Gentiles will come to your light and the kings to your brightness. Come on, put your hands together. Give Jesus the glory. Whoa. Come on, somebody shout, whoa. Come on, whoa. This is a sound of revival in the midst of all this negativity. You know, friends, the purpose of this message is, I want to say this, I gave you the text, I gave you the title. What is the purpose? The purpose is not all the signs of end time are bad. Yes. Come on, take heart. Yes. Come on, take heart. Yes. Isn't that wonderful? Come on, isn't that wonderful? Yes. Just as Isaiah prophesied that I will pour on one whom is thirsty and our flood of on whom who is dry over your children, over your descendants. As just as Isaiah prophesied just now, I want you to know Joel chapter 2 verse 28 also says the same thing. And Peter says this in Acts chapter 2. How many of you remember? Acts chapter 2 verse 16, 17 to 21. And Peter says this, in the last days I will pour. Everybody say pour. And Isaiah says the same thing. I'll 
pour, I'll pour my spirit on all flesh, not to afflict them, not to try them, not to test them, not to chastise them. I'll pour my spirit on all flesh and your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see vision from heaven. Your old men will have dreams upon the men servant and maid servant was serving God. They will prophesy and I'll show signs in heaven, wonders on the earth and Ends by verse 21. Whoever calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. Come on. Let's give Jesus the glory. Whoa. Come on. Somebody say, whoa. I've never been so close to people. No. Our stages are so high. People are so far. cannot even see the faces. Now all come with masks. And now we're still. Either they're sleeping or something. We don't know. Some of them just. Are you here with me? Yeah. Come on, somebody shout amen, please. Yeah. Now, what's in store in this prophecy? The last day, this is the momentum of the Holy Spirit. And I prophesy over this church, the new covenant community church. I prophesy that you will enter into the momentum of the Holy Spirit. And you will enter into the season of the Holy Spirit. And I prophesy, as I prophesy, as you will envision the future, you will begin to experience three things. A greater harvest, a greater evangelism, a greater revival shall take place in your midst. Come on, put your hands together, give Jesus the glory. Amen. Amen. Isn't that wonderful? Isn't that wonderful? You know, friends, look at me. In Acts chapter 2, verses 16 right up to 21, there's three things are packed in there. Greater harvest. Greater evangelism. Greater revival. Are you here with me? And this will start with the church first. Come on. Everybody say the church first. Yeah. You know, friends, while the church is looking out for revival, looking out for evangelism, looking out for for, uh, harvest, it's not going to happen. You know why? The Bible clearly tells us in the last days, 1 Peter chapter 4 verse 17. 1 Peter chapter 4 verse 17. I'm sure you're familiar with the scripture. 4. For the time has come for judgment. I'm not a doomsday preacher, okay? Hang in there. To begin at the house of God. That's why your pastor is recasting the vision. Vision Sunday. Okay? It says here, for the time has come for the judgment to begin at the house of God. And if it begins with the house of God first, what will be the end of those who don't obey the gospel of God? It starts with us. And that word, come on, don't be frightened. Turn to your neighbor and say, Fui ao pa. Jangan takut, bye brother. Okay? You know, friends, the word judgment in the context of the scripture is krino. K-R-I-N-O. You know what it means? The word in this context, in the context of this scripture, is to separate. Separate. You know, God separate the church from from lukewarmness to zeal, from complacency to commitment, to to from from darkness to light, from ashes to fire, from unbelief to faith, from unrighteousness to righteousness, from, 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 from condemnation to conviction. Put your hands together. Come on. It's a place of separation. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody say amen, please. For too long, the church has been living in in their second love. For too long, the church has not been committed the way they should be committed. For too long, the church has been living in complacency, compromise, and lukewarmness. It's about time the church gets set on fire. That's what Kuro means. That's what Kuro means. I tell you, when I preach back home, worse. Because they know me, I whack them. 
up to that they say very good boss <laughs> when i preach an encouraging message a few people come to be encouraged when i preach this kind of message first time preaching of course they say pastor thank you we are wackers again <laughs> look at me not all leaders are disciples but all disciples are leaders yes. i'm a disciple maker not all leaders are disciples but all disciples are leaders the church in the book of acts the seventh chapter it says in those days the number of disciples grew and that's what's going to happen that's what's going to happen for greater harvest for greater evangelism for greater um revival can somebody say ma'am i got water are you asking for water okay no 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 okay no problem i help myself thank you think about what i'm saying think about what i'm saying it's about time we recommit our lives to god it's about time we straighten our walk with god it's about time that we realize there's more, more joy and freedom in obedience than disobedience come on don't hide behind your ministries in disobedience don't hide behind your leadership in disobedience don't hide behind what you're doing in disobedience nothing can replace obedience to god not your prayer not your sacrifice not your worship not your giving and not anything not your talent come on somebody shout amen please okay pastor elijah as i said pastor and all the leaders i want to say this when we begin to aim for the fullness of the holy spirit the entire environment of the church changes you know evangelism is no longer a work it becomes a ministry revival is no longer a prayer it happens harvest is no longer a work but it happens are you here with me you know so i want to say this only the presence of god the fullness of the presence of god can sanctify the church Amen. correct the church the church need to be corrected you ask any punjabi preachers they'll tell you <laughs> they'll tell you the bengali is like that i got a bengali community in the church and i tell you this guys are disciplined guys they don't just play the fool they mean what they say they do what they say are you here with me and that's elijah pastor elijah in fact for your discipline the lord will give you a national level leadership you can wake more people <laughs> this is too small for you okay now and then number two, it is the fullness everybody say fullness, fullness. it's the fullness of god that will make everything whole come on your finances will start growing come on these are the needed things your multimedia is struggling with the sound man they're good guys <laughs> you're struggling with your worship team pastor take my word you're struggling with them and i tell you in the fullness of the presence of god all this will fall in the right place the right person to teach the sunday school the right person to do the yield you don't need to go and beg people hey, come on we got sir. no need no need the kingdom of god is is it functions through a spirit led volunteerism put your hands together give jesus the glory a spirit led volunteerism hallelujah here am i use me lord here am i i want to work lord come on somebody show him at least and that's how we built church in Calvary City Church all these years. We look for one thing, the momentum of the Holy Spirit. The momentum. And the momentum of the Holy Spirit starts with all of us. Remember Ezekiel? You know Ezekiel, how let me explain this. Are, are you here with me? It's the same in the family too. Parents, if you have children who are rebelling, you know if you got financial difficulties at home, desire for the fullness of the spirit come on you know friends ezekiel okay ezekiel 47 let me explain ezekiel 47 verses 9 this talks about prophetically the fullness of god and it shall be that every living thing that moves 
Every living, you are a living thing that's moving. But we're moving in hopelessness. We're, we're moving in, 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 in hurts and, and we're moving in limitation. But it says, and it shall be that every living thing that moves, wherever the river goes. Everybody say the river. The river. Come on, wherever the river, the presence of God goes. There will be great multitude of fish. Because these waters go there for they will be healed. Everything will live wherever the river goes. Pastor Elijah and all the leaders. About 10 years ago, you know, I thank God. God used me to just reach one orang asli. And his name is um, Im Bin Palon. You know, runs a restaurant, went to eat the seafood there. Well, a Punjabi. Just one thing. No, no. Gurcharan Singh, sorry. He's a captain. And his wife, Julie Kaur, got saved. They're all Kali worshippers. He's a pilot. If you come down and introduce this guy, gem of a person. They got saved. And he's excited. I want to take you for, for seafood restaurant uh, dinner uh, Monday night. And I want you to meet the guy who makes charm for me. Charms. Arangasli's make charms. Okay? Now, this is real testimony. You know, and you know what? So while we're eating crap, I remember, you know, you know, <laughs> um, pepper crap. And this guy comes. The owner of the restaurant is around us. He comes. And uh, Captain Singh, Captain Singh, he's like a brother to me. He introduces him to me. So I just fist bum him. Because hence the dirty finger. And the minute I touched him, God gave me a word of knowledge. The whole village is under the domination of the spirit of death. I opened my mouth and told him. I said, yes. How do you know? Are you a bomo? He asked me. <laughs> yes. I know really. Come on, bomo. I said, I'm the bomo for Jesus. I said. <laughs> now hear this. Hear this. You know what happened? Hear this. You know, Pastor Jalong is doing the ministry right now. I'm a BM pastor. You know what? One guy. I told him, Tuesday, come to my office. Tuesday, he brought his wife. Okay. Um, Tayang. Her name is Tayang. Im um, Palon Tayang. They both come to my office. I took them to the prayer room, prayed for them. Both went through deliverance. Okay, the next day. Next day, they asked me to come to the restaurant. You know what? Eight people got saved. The following, following Monday, 16 people got saved. The following week, 26 people got saved. The following week, 90 people got saved. And the following week, more than 70% of the kampong gave their heart to Jesus. The story not ended. You know what? From that kampong, they're all still alive. You come. You must go and eat there. You know? And you know what? Uh, and that kampong led us to another kampong, another kampong, another kampong. We got about five kampongs. You know how many people have we baptized? Remove the charms. You know? More than 200 adults, we baptize them, glory to God. And we have a huge ministry. I want to say this, you know what happened to them? You know that this government is a bad government. You know what? They cause these orang are the original guys. You know, they live below poverty. They eat in the same place. They bathe in the same place. Do their business in the same place. We build houses for them. We took the children to school. You know what happened? Marvelous. We taught them. You know what I taught them? Just one thing. They can't, many of them, the first generation cannot read. You know what I taught them? Kalau kamu pandai cari Tuhan, berkat akan cari kamu. Kalau kamu pandai cari berkat, beban akan cari kamu. That's all I taught them, you know. I took them through 40 days of fast. Indian fellows cannot fast. Chinese fellows cannot fast. Malay fellows cannot fast. Got gastric law, got this law, got that law. And all the fellows fasted. We went in and cut down trees where they were worshipping under the trees. There was a massive evangelism. You know what happened? Pastor Elijah, till today, this is the third generation right now. You know what? God healed the swamps. And they used to catch huge crabs, king crabs. And then God healed the jungles, wild boar. God healed their waters, fish in kilos. God healed. And I tell you, I've got a first-hand experience of the fullness of the presence of God. 
And I'm telling you, I'm telling you, jangan main-main. When the fullness of the Holy Spirit comes upon you because you desire everything that's not complete will be completed. Everything that's not healed will be healed. Everything that's not restored will be restored. Everything that's not saved will be saved. Everything that's not blessed will be blessed. Everything that's not sanctified will be sanctified. Everything that's not set free will be set free. Come on, put your hands together. Give Jesus a glory. And this is what the Lord asked me to preach this morning. I've got thousands of sermons here. And I preach every week. Come, so many services. You know how many services we have? 87 services in Johor Bahru. Chinese, Mandarin. Different, different places, of course. Not one place. Bahasa Malaysia, Bahasa Indonesia, Orang Asli, Nepali, Vietnamese, English, Bilingual, Myanmar. I can't remember. 11, 11 languages, you know, and different, different pastors, you know, and I get to preach. Now look at me, please. I got a word for you this morning. This is the word for you. I sought the Lord. I, I owe my brother. I owe my brother. He did good to me, and I want to do good to him, Lord. Give me a word for his church. He said, preach the fullness of the Holy Spirit, and that's what they need. And like the river, wherever the river goes, wherever the river goes, everything will get healed. Everything will be restored. Everything. One of the things the Lord told, showed me, this church lacks loyalty. Loyalty to the leadership. We have grown betrayers, but God's going to change that. Those who betrayed, God will bless them. Don't worry, we're not talking about them now. God will bless them. That's not our job. Our job is to do what God wants us to do. Come on, somebody say man, please. And God's going to raise this up. You know, please give room to the Holy Spirit. Give room. Give pro prominence to the Spirit of God. Come on. Somebody say amen, please. Look at me, please. I'm going to quickly end this in a short while. You know, you remember the scripture. How many of you remember the scripture? In 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17 and 18. Okay. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17 and 18. 4 the Lord is the Spirit, right? Where the Spirit of God is, there is liberty. Look at the next verse. What liberty are we celebrating? What liberty are we celebrating? The progressive will of God. You know what it says? The next verse. As though beholding in the mirror with an unveiled face, we behold the glory of God and we are being transformed from glory to glory into his image. Put your hands together. Give Jesus the glory. Shata, rata, shada, rata, sata, rata, sata. For this day, the Lord will have this note to you. I'll visit you. I'll visit you in dreams and I'll visit you in visions and I'll visit you in conviction and I'll stir you and I'll cause you to walk in the fullness of my father and in the fullness of my presence that's going to be joy and favor and pleasure evermore says the Lord come on put your hands together give Jesus a glory <laughs> hallelujah I assure you Pastor Elijah chase after the spirit of God you'll make it you'll make it real good this time and I'm telling you this that's a prophetic, apostolic injunction over the church. Come on. Somebody say amen, please. Okay, very quickly. Okay. Are we still time? Oh. Are you guys okay? okay. I, I don't preach too long anyway. Have I, have I done too long? Now it's 11 o'clock. Usually what time you finish? No, no. <laughs> no, no. Be okay, I, I, can, I can just... I said all that I need to say through the Spirit of God. But now I must give you something that will help you to attain the fullness of the Spirit of God. Okay, please turn with me to your Bibles, please. How can I experience the fullness of the Holy Spirit? Bagaimana? How? How? How many of you want to know? Yes. Yeah, right. That's right. Wow, the hand went so high. <laughs> Serious. Yeah. Serious. 
I have, Pastor Elijah, I have experienced a couple of momentums in the church, in missions, in the social works, and in the church. So when the momentum comes, there's no moment for men. Serious, I, I mean it. And I, I, I pray this for you. Yeah, I pray this for you. Actually, you're running your last leg of the church because you're going to do other things, my friend. Okay? Not that you're going to die, okay? <laughs> I'll give you a Punjabi funeral. All the ghee. <laughs> now, all the fellows who get married in the church, they invite the Bangara guys to come. Even the Chinese fellows do that in the church. In the dinner. They want to come in with the bhangra. They don't want to dance and come. All right. Bengali fellas influence us badly. Okay. okay. <laughs> Correctly. Okay. How can I experience the fullness of the Holy Spirit? Okay. I, I, I want to close with this. Ephesians chapter 5 verses 18 through 21. Okay. 18 through 21. Are you there with me? Guys, are you there with me? Yes. Okay. And do not be drunk with wine in which there is dissipation. You look, look, Manjit's brother. Huh? Are you Manjit's brother? Oh, he is? Oh, okay. Your sister is in the church. And then uh, your nephew. Yep. And uh, please let us know where you buy rice. We also want to buy there. Or where you buy the chapati flour. All gundu buyers, you know? Whole family gundus, no? <laughs> okay, la. big is blessing, okay? And do not be drunk with wine in which there's dissipation, wastage, but be feel. Everybody say be feel. Be feel. That's a key. The word feel here in Greek is, how do you pronounce this word? Rusty. Okay. Sounds like French. Yes. Huh? Are you letting go or what? <laughs> Play roste. That's the Greek word for that word. You know what it means? It means to be refill. How many of you are not baptized in the Holy Spirit? You don't speak in tongues. You don't speak in tongues. Everybody speak in tongues? You don't speak. Do you want to be baptized in the Holy Spirit? How many of you want to be baptized in the Holy Spirit? Okay, why like hand go like that? Think what? I'm a, a feng shui master. Come on, how many of you want to be baptized in the Holy Spirit? Lift up your hands, lift up your hands, lift it high, high. Okay, that's right, I'm going to do. And the rest of you, uh, how many of you don't speak in tongues? Maybe you don't understand what I'm talking about. Okay, yeah, okay. You have to put your hand where you put it again. Yeah. Now, now, for those of us who are already baptized in the Holy Spirit, you don't stay there. You need to be refilled. Everybody say refill. refill. Okay, let me finish that. And then with uh, uh, stay with the Spirit, refill with the Spirit, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your hearts to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things to God, the Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting to one another in the fear of God. Yeah, Submitting to one another. This is the problem with the church today. We don't want to submit. This is the problem with pastors. I work with pastors, you know, a full-time work, 100 old fellas, you know, difficult to submit, you know, and then they come and complain to me, the church members are not submitting them. <laughs> Simple, right? You know, and this is the problem. Come on, somebody say, ouch, please. Ouch. That's right. Okay, there are four dynamic, everybody say four dynamic. Four, four dynamic transformation, spiritual transformation that is about to take place in your life when you allow the Lord to refill you and bring you to the momentum of the Holy Spirit. Say momentum of the Holy Spirit. Dr. Sherilyn, are you here? Okay, she's not here yet. Okay. 
Hopefully she finds a place. Okay? Right. Come on. Look at me, please. Everybody look at me. Number one. This is important. You, you need to be refill. Everybody say refill. refill. Now, how many of you speak four letter words? <laughs> hey, no, don't be surprised. Yeah. You know, we hide under our spirituality and we speak four letter words in anger. How many of you speak? Don't put up hand, of course. Very embarrassing, you know. <laughs> we're angry, we let go, no? Let go, let go. You know, the first thing, that's why refilling is important. If you want to come to the momentum of the Holy Spirit, you need to be refilled. And I'm here to pray for you. I'm, I'm set apart to pray for you. Okay? You'll have a new tongues. God will give you a new tongues. A new experience, totally a new experience. Look at, I'm going to divide the scripture into four and then we are done. We're going to pray. Number one, the first thing that will happen that will usher you into the momentum of the Holy Spirit is the transformation of your speech. It says here, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. You know, friends, do you know, look at me, everybody look at me. 1 Peter 4, 11 says... If anyone speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. Come on. Are you here with me? Not oracles of frustration. Not oracles of disappointment. Not oracles of vulgarity. Not oracles of lie and deception. Come on. Somebody say man, please. You know, friends, I want to say this. And I often quote this in the church. And this is where the church has to come to. You know what? God's word in your mouth is as powerful as God's word in his mouth. That's what we need to come. Come on, are you here with me? God's word in your mouth is as powerful as God's word in his mouth. Come on, we need to become the oracle of God. Come on, say the oracle of God. Ezekiel 37 verses 1 through 10, the Lord spoke to, to, to Ezekiel and prophesied over the dry bones. Are you here with me? Come on. And Jesus said, Mount Peace, Jesus said in Matthew 7 and 20, because of your unbelief, if you have faith like a mustard seed, and if you would say to the mountain, move from here to there, it will happen and nothing will be impossible. Come on. The first thing that God has to deal with us in bringing the momentum of the Holy Spirit is the sanctification of our tongue, the transformation of our tongues. Come on. Somebody shout him out, please. Put your hands together. Give Jesus a glory. Because life and death, life to grow, life to die is in the power of the tongue. Proverbs 18, 21. Come on, somebody say man, please. We have been callous with our tongues. We praise God with the tongue. We speak in tongues with the tongue. And we worship God with the tongue. And with the same tongue, we curse, we lie, we deceive. We do all kinds of things. The first thing that God has to cleanse the church is their conversation. Come on, put your hands together. Give Jesus the glory. That's refilling. I used to speak a lot of Cantonese bad words. Because I majored in electrical, electronic engineering. And I was doing the Sungai Wang Plaza. And I was in charge of the electrical. And all the wiremen and the farmen and chargemen all from Ipoh. You know? And if you want to speak Cantonese, you have to speak the dirty words first. <laughs> you have to call the father and mother, mother especially, mother and sister. You know, I have to call. There comes my daughter, is it? No, she's not here. And you know what? Look at me, please. I have so much of filth in my mouth. The minute I was baptized in the Holy Spirit, you know what happened? And I started speaking in tongues. Everything disappeared. Everything disappeared. Are you here with me? Your tongue is the foundation for the greater revival that God's bringing to the church. Come on. Can somebody say man, please? Number two. Very quickly, number two, the second transformation that will bring you into the momentum of the Holy Spirit is, um, is that the transformation of your spirit. Many of us have got new engine with old oil. So we need to change the oil. Uh, our oil is old. 
Are you here with me? We go to the mechanic because the oil is it, it's already burned. The oil is dirty and, uh, and all kinds of things. And we need this morning an oil change. An oil change. You know what it says here? Um, it says number two, the transformation of your spirit. Singing. Everybody says singing. Singing and making melody in your heart. Singing and making melody. This is times of refreshing that will come from the presence of God. Like David said in Psalms 92 and verse 10, David said this, You have exalted my home like a wild ox and you have filled me with fresh oil. Fresh oil. How many of you are tired? Come on. How many of you are tired? How many of you are lethargic? How many of you are spiritually backward? What you need is an oil change. You need to be refilled so that you can be renewed. You can be refreshed. You can be revived and revisit the vision that God has given to you so that you can be revitalized. Put your hands together. Give Jesus a glory. Amen. The spirit. Everybody says spirit. spirit. Number one, mouth. Number two, spirit. Let's move on. And then number three, the trans. Number three, if you want to enter into the momentum of the Holy Spirit, is the transformation of your attitude. Attitude. You know what it says here? Giving thanks always for all things. Always for all things. Giving thanks uh, to God always for all things. To God the Father in the name of of our Lord Jesus Christ. Look at me, please. We need to become thankful. Mother Teresa is a legend. You know what she said? She said, being thankful in small thing is small thing, but it's a great thing in the sight of God. Amen. Are you here with me? Look at me. Everybody look at me. Everybody who's com- who are champions of complainers. You cannot be thankful for the one who is successful. You cannot be thankful for the one that's healed. You cannot be thankful for the one who has made it before you. You know, with jealousy. You know what? It is the altitude. Everybody say altitude. It is the altitude of gratitude will determine your altitude in God. I say this. It's the attitude of gratitude that will determine your altitude in God. Come on. Somebody say man, please. Come on. Come on. Look at me. The men who made it were the men who were thankful to God. The men who could not make it were men and women were complainers. How many of you complained this morning before coming? You know what the Bible tells us in Philippians chapter 2 verse 14? Do all things. The things whether you like it or don't like it. The things you accept, you don't accept. Huh? Do all things without complaining and without contending, fighting. Are you here with me? God is raising up a thankful generation. I'm thankful. I told my brother, nobody else can do what you're doing right now. I don't care what the heck others have to say. But nobody can do what you're doing. And I want to encourage you. And nobody can go through the pain you go through. Because you're a Bengali. (laughs) Your threshold of pain is stronger. Can somebody say amen please? Come on, are you here with me? I celebrate his success. I celebrate his family. I celebrate what he's doing. Why? Because I'm thankful. You know, the Bible tells us, look at me. The Bible tells us in 1 Thessalonians 5, 18. In everything. Everybody say everything. Everything. In everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God concerning you in Christ Jesus. Come on, can you stand for a while? I think some of you are having cramps, I think. I'm I'm finished already. One more point only. Okay, listen to me. You're standing up, listen to me. Is it all right? Some of you taking notes, just sing. You just write, sing. Do you read your notes when you go back in? Okay. Knowing the Manjit family, they take a lot of notes. But they go home, don't read. <laughs> I'm your different, no? <laughs> Come on, look at me. Everybody look at me. If you, if you are not in the will of God, you cannot discover the plan of God. The will of God is painful. I think some of you are going through right now. It's called the transition of agony. Transition of agony. Okay? Why are you looking there? I'm here. 
<laughs> Are you going through? <laughs> Are you expecting some confirmation from the screen? Now look at me, please. But the will of God is never easy. But when you get to the plan of God, Romans 12, 2 says, the plan of God is a good plan, perfect plan, acceptable plan. Are you here with me? So give thanks. In everything give thanks. For this is the will of God. Psalms 92 verse 1 says, it is a good thing to give thanks to the Lord. And to bless his holy name. Isn't that wonderful? That's number three. Number one, the transformation of your speech. Number two, the transformation of your spirit. Number three, the transformation of your attitude. Number four. This is very important. We're all going to serve together. Say serve together. You cannot build a church by complaining. You cannot build a church by, by saying uh, why they do this this way, why the worship leader is standing there, why the musician is standing here. You know, with complaints you cannot build a church. Only by serving you can build a church. You know the last scripture yeah, Ephesians 5, 21, submit to one another in the fear of God. This is the beginning of servanthood. This is the beginning of servanthood. Can somebody say amen, please? Amen. And we serve one another. You know, we care for one another. We love one another. Jesus is coming back for a church that's a family. He's not coming back for a church that's an army fighting with one another, ambushing one another. But he's coming back for a church that's a family. You know? Isn't that wonderful? Amen. And Jesus said in Mark chapter 10 and verse 45, he himself said this, for the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to lay his life as a ransom. Isn't that wonderful? Come on, lift up your hands to Jesus, please. All over this place. All over this place. You know, there's an anointing in this atmosphere. And I want you to just reach out to the Lord. Can you do that? Just reach out to the Lord. You know, I want to say this. The Holy Spirit prompted my heart to say this. You may not be familiar with the presence of God, but He is familiar with your presence. He is familiar with you. He is familiar with you. Shada Rabba Siddhidyanta Rabba Sunday. Those who are baptized in the Holy Spirit, can you just speak in tongues? Just speak in tongues. Shada Rabba Siddhidyanta. Siddhidyanta Rala Rabba Siddhidyanta Rala Rabba Sanda. Siddhidyanta Rala Rabba Siddhidyanta Rala Rabba Sanda. Siddhidyanta Rala Rala Rabba Siddhidyanta. Come on, just go on, go on. There's an anointing in this place. There's an anointing in this place. Hallelujah. For those who want to be baptized in the Holy Spirit, I'll spend some time with you. But right now, I want you to, those of you who want to be refilled, I want you to just reach out to the Lord. Refill me, Lord. Refill me. Refill me. You know, there's, there's a deposit that's going to take place. And all I ask you to do is to just pray in the Spirit. Can you do that? Praying in the Spirit connects you to this, this, this fountain. Come on. Come on. Shada Rabba Rata Sata. Hikuburutu Sata Rata Sata. Refill, Lord. Refill, Lord. Refill, Lord. Hallelujah. Rakata Sata. You just continue to pray. I will do a prophetic declaration. You just continue to pray in the spirit. Rata sata, rata sata. Shada da 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 ba rante. Hekubaroto sata, rata sata. Shada da 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 ba sata di andai. Hekanda raba sata, rata sata, rata rata sata. Renew new oil, new oil, new oil, new oil. A new oil, a new oil. That's right. A new wine, a new wine, a new presence, a new presence, a new presence. Refill, renew, refresh. Shada da da. Go on, go on, go on. Shut up, Rata Satam. 
If the sister can give me the keyboard, just flow with me, flow with me. I cannot come down to you, but you just begin to reach out to the Lord. Sunday. Come on, that's a that's a flow. That's a flow. That's a flow. Come on, start singing in the spirit. That's right, all over this place, all over this place, like a like a fountain, like a fountain, like a fountain. That's right, wave, wave upon wave, come on, wave upon wave, fountain upon fountain, river upon river, just close your eyes, get connected, get connected. That's right, that's right. Go on, flow, flow with me, flow with me. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. That's right, wave upon wave. Come on, wave upon wave. God is just healing some of us. God is just healing some of us. From joint to joint, from muscle to muscle, from nerve to nerve, from tendon to tendon, from organ to organ. God's healing right now. Hallelujah. Come on, growth. Growth is disappearing right now. Growth is disappearing right now. Every, every suspected cancer cell being removed. Come on, come on, come on. That's right, that's right. Someone's back, someone's back is being healed. I am pouring my river upon you, say the Lord. Come on, go on, go on. Touch! The Lord is touching you! The Lord is touching you! Come on! I see angels in this place! Come on, just reach out! Angels in this place! Angels in this place! Reach out! Break out, break out in tongues. Break out in tongues if you're not speaking tongues. Break out. I'm revisiting you. I'm renewing you. I'm refreshing you. I'm reviving you. Somebody praying for scholarship. God is giving it to you. Hallelujah. Someone praying for scholarship over the children. God is giving it to you. Reach out, reach out to him. There's a river flowing. There's a river flowing. There's a river flowing. There's a river flowing. New ministries. Pastor Elijah, new ministries. New ministries, new ministries, new ministries. Old people, but new ministries. Come on, reach out to the Lord. 
Come on, reach out to the Lord. Reach out to the I'm going to move in word of knowledge right now. Come on, just reach out to the Lord. I'm going to close my eyes and I'm going to see the screen that the Lord is showing me. If you're that person, just receive it. Allergic conditions are being healed. Allergic conditions are being healed. Heart conditions are being healed. Alzima, Alzima, God's healing right now. Someone with a kidney ailment, God's healing right now. Bloated stomach, bloated stomach, God's healing right now. Reach out, reach out to the Lord. Hallelujah. Gastric conditions, gastric conditions, gastric conditions. Come on, come on, just reach out to the Lord. There are five of you who are standing here and you know the call of God in your life. The Lord has called you. The Lord has called you and you need to tell, Here am I, send me Lord. Here am I, send me Lord. Here am I, send me Lord. That's why I reach out to the Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus. Seal, seal this happening with the blood of Jesus. Just remain in this attitude. Pastor Elijah, Sister Petrina, would you come please? Thank you, Lord. Should you understand it? Give me the oil. Thank you, Jesus. Is it okay if I don't wait? Stretch your hands towards the pastor, please. Rata sata rata sata rata sata. He brota sata rata sata sata sata. Number one. The Lord says this to you, my dear brother and sister. Health will no longer be a concern. I've given you the armor of divine health. As in Jeremiah 33 and verse 6, I have assigned, I'm sure you're taping this, right? I'm as, I have assigned health and healing to you. And I have established you in the stronghold of peace. That's the first word that God gives me. Shatter, rata, sutter, rata, sutter, sutter. Shatter, rata, sutter, rata, sutter. Shatter, rubber, rata, sutter, rata. The Lord says this to you. Your later effectiveness, your later extension, your latest, your later fruitfulness is going to be greater than the former ones. That's what the Lord says. It's Haggai chapter 2, 7, 8, and 9. For this day I, the Lord, will cause my new anointing to come on you. You will begin to see things differently. It's no longer going to be the same blurred vision. As in Psalms 92 verse 10, as I said this to David, I'm saying this to you, says the Lord. I'm exalting your horn like a wild ox. Once again, renewed authority, renewed strength, renewed tenacity. And I'm pouring fresh oil upon you, both Elijah and Petrina. For Petrina, you are a woman of skillfulness. As in, his, as in Exodus 31 verses 1, 2, and 3. I, the Lord, have assigned outstanding 
skillfulness over you. You're a woman of wisdom. You're a woman of counsel. You're a woman of knowledge. You're a woman of understanding. You're a woman of mind. You're a woman of the power of God. And you're a woman of the fear of God. For you, Sister Christina, the Lord says, I've given you the heritage of those who fear the Lord. As in Psalm 61, verses 1 through 7. What is the heritage of those who fear the Lord? Psalms 25, verses 13, 14, and 15. I, the Lord, will speak to you heart to heart. And I, the Lord, will reveal my secrets to you. And I, the Lord, will prosper not only you, but your children. I, the Lord, will cause everything that is not in place to come to places. That which has not been certain will become certain. That which has not been stable will become stable, says the Lord. For this day the Lord will have this known to you, both Pastor Elijah and Pastor Petrinam. I, the Lord, have lined up, I see in my spirit, I, the Lord, have lined up couples as armor bearers for you. I, the Lord, will show what loyalty is all about to you. And as a word of exhortation, the Lord will have this known to both of you. In the days that you have passed, you have gone through many things that others would not understand. And the Lord will say this, Hebrew, the 6th chapter verse 10. For I, the Lord, am not unjust to you. As to the love you have shown to people and his saying, I, the Lord, will be merciful to you, says the Lord. Shada rabba rata sata, rata sata, rata sata, rata sata. One final word. Expect. Expect great things, says the Lord. And while you're expecting great things, attempt great things. Daniel 11.32, Shaka Barata, Rata Sata Sata. For dignity, for dignity, the Lord gave me two visions. And I want to release this right now. In the first vision, the Lord showed me a huge building. And the building, at the, at, as I'm facing it, on the right hand side, towards the a, towards a corner, there's a crack. There's a crack. And the Lord tells me that there has been an inv- invasion of unrighteousness. There has been an invasion of compromise. There has been an inv- invasion of the fear of men. And I, the Lord, have sealed it with one thing, and that's the fear of God. And Proverbs chapter 10 verse 22 And I, the Lord, will cause this unrighteousness to be removed so that purity will prevail. And all those who are working with you will begin to work with personal purity. There's no more compromise because I'm lifted up in this place. I'm lifted up. I'm the reason for this, says the Lord. I'm the reason for dignity, says the Lord. It's like Galatians chapter 2, 20. That's vision number one. All compromises I'm erasing. It's like Proverbs uh, Proverbs 14, Proverbs 14 and verse verse 34. Righteousness exalts, but sin and reproach is a shame. Thank you, dear Father. Number two, the next vision that God gave me uh, for dignity is, it's like a huge, it's like a huge um, uh, grill. Huge grill, not door. And and you've been trying to go through this. You've been trying to go through this. You've been trying to go through this. The grill is bent. The grill is uh, is bent, but it, it never, ever you had a breakthrough. But yesterday morning as I was praying, I saw this entire grill just come apart. Just come apart. And the word that God gave me for you is Isaiah, Isaiah 45, like King Cyrus. You know, I, I've given you double doors. I've opened double doors. I've gone before you and straightened your path. And I, the Lord, have broken down the steel bars and the bronze of gate. And I, the Lord, will have already in store for you uh, riches in secret places, treasures in dark places. Therefore, dignity will no longer function under the under the dignity of man but will function under the dignity of Jesus hallelujah father i just pray this prayer over both of them lord bless them renew them refresh them as as both of them are going to to change the the ministries that they would do in the days to come lord let the handover uh, be be smooth dear father 
and let the extension take place. Bless them. Lord, I just anoint them, both of them. And uh, the Lord told me to just pray for your health. And I just want to pray for it right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I just commit both husband and wife and the two children, lovely children, Hannah and uh, Davina. Davina, into your hands. Both of them are skillfully anointed. Both of them are women of excellence. Both of them are women who are faithful. God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, bless this family. Be a hedge of protection around them. Watch over them. And I pray for good health. Good health from joint to joint, from muscle to muscle, from nerve to nerve, from tendon to tendon, from organ to organ. Let your healing power just flow. You will be like a plant planted in the garden of the Lord, watered by the Lord, and you will be ever fruitful. Thank you. Bless them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Pastor, you, you need to take over and then introduce. you for all of you praying with us. Um, we're going to keep in this atmosphere of prayer. We're actually going to have Pastor Phil Singh and Jinai come up. Um, they have served faithfully for years. Amen? Amen. Faithfully. And uh, there's one thing that I, I would say. They have never complained actually. Uh, even at times when I just give different things to get done and if I get busy with different things. There's one thing I would say that marks them is actually faithfulness. Amen? Really, if I say there's one thing that marks them is faithfulness. Um, you know, uh, I, I always, if there's an issue, they, they will come speak to me, whatever it is. But always carrying a positive image back, engaging with the young people, the gen... Uh, Gen Y with, with the young adults, uh, with different in, different ministries, uh, I I've been thoroughly blessed and encouraged by them, and now watching their children serve as well. So, and uh, you know, I, I know it, it was a bit of a concern when I said, hey, you know. So even today he dressed up quite nicely. So, you know, you know, uh, you know, bit of a concern when I said, hey, I I think you know you you should be the associate pastor and take more and, and all of us have seen how he has really stepped up with taking their masters and all the different things I, I think this is a great person it's a great couple to really come alongside Petrina and me and the rest of the team to really begin to give even more pastoral care to everybody Amen? Don't you think we can agree with that? And this is the next phase of their life and of course, we, we have different ones. I, you know, have, have Sophia have always been there. And, and Seawan, uh, again, two others who are amazingly faithful. You know, uh, never grumble, maybe with each other. But, you know, but always. Sometimes we don't see them doing things, but really a lot of things anchoring. Faithful, faithfully there doing all that is necessary. And with the other teams, and maybe I'll say a bit more later. But today we really want to set in both, uh, you know, Fusing and, and Jin Ai as she, she's going to be a bit like, as, as past, associate pastors, because have to be husband and wife, huh? you know, and, uh, I, I, and I know they're going to carry an amazing anointing and I, and I was very strategic about it and I wanted Pastor Benedict, so I did a, got him a favor, so got him hooked. No, I mean, no, no, we never do that to each other. We always compliment each other. And uh, so I, I really, I thought about different people. And even my wife, you know, we were talking about it. She said, she said, we really need somebody more, more prophetic will be able to. And I thought, nobody else better than my dear brother here, you know, who would come. And I know he'll speak from the sincerity of his heart and he will seek the Lord. So today, I'm going to ask us, to, to stretch out our hands, participate however Pastor Benedict uh, will, will, Pastor Rajan would want to do it. And uh, we're going to, uh, Pat, I need you up here as well. Um, and uh, we're going to uh, set you in as the associate pastors of New Covenant Community today. All yours, sir. Okay. Do you want to stand with them? Y'all fight often, you know? 
Not too bad. Okay, now, uh, Pastor Elijah, I will charge them first and then prophesy over them. Okay? New Covenant Community Church. Okay, look at me, please. Pastor Fusing. Fusing. Jin Ai. Are you calling her pastor too? Okay. Pastor Fuseng and Pastor Jin Ai. Okay. I, on behalf of Pastor Elijah Sapinder, on behalf of uh, New Covenant Community Church, I charge you, therefore, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ who will judge the living and the dead at his appearing in his kingdom. Okay? Preach the word. Not preach from the word. Preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and teaching. For the time has come, many will not endure sound doctrine. Okay, especially in KL. They go ch church shopping. They shop their own pastors. No? But according to their own desire, because they have itching ears, they will keep up for themselves teachers. And they will turn their ears away from the truth. Be turned aside to fables. But you couldn't sing. Fusing and Jedi. But you be watchful in all things. Endure affliction. Okay, welcome to the world of affliction. Okay, do the work of an evangelist. Fulfill the call to your ministry. Okay, is that agreeable? Can I amen to me? Thank you, Lord. You want to Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, Thank you Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, dear Father. Thank you, Lord. Father, we commit Pastor Fusing and Jin Ai into your hands. As we pray for them, we extend, we extend our right hand of fellowship to them in the ministry, especially under Reverend Elijah and Reverend Pat Patrina. 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 Thank you, dear Father. And we declare the appointment as associate pastors. Stretch your hands, please. Associate pastors, dedicated to you. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And we anoint them with the oil of ministry. The oil of, of an evangelist. Bless both of them, dear Father. For this day, the Lord will have this known to you. As in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 7 through 12. 7 through 12. I, the Lord, have placed upon you a mental a mental of a pastor you are a pastor you're a pastor you're a teacher you're a disciple maker and I place this mental upon you and people will be drawn to you because of your pastoral care because you both carry that anointing I see in my spirit families that has been uh, dis dispel dispersed will be brought into healing yeah it will be brought into healing and you will be instrumental in bringing a lot of young adults into the church. That's, this is what I see very clearly. Young adults. And you will disciple them. You will mentor them. And number two, number two, you don't have your own agenda. Your agenda is the, is the new covenant church, community church agenda. You are an armor bearer. Finally, Pastor Elijah has found a man who will not glory in his success, 
but will glory in the growth of the church. And you will be that kind of a man. You will be that kind of a man. You will lead, yet you will be an excellent follower. You will lead, but you will be an excellent follower. Lord, bless him, dear Father. Bless him. Bless his wife too. Um, uh, Chinan, you have a gentle spirit. Gentle and a quiet spirit. As in 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 1 and 2, many will be drawn to you. You have a prophetic mantle over you. And this mantle is a gentle, mantle is a gentle, beautiful mantle speaking into people's life. Speaking into people's life. Thank you, dear Father. In the days that are ahead, you will add, begin to add value, great value into this ministry. God, just bless them, keep them, watch over them. There's a divine intervention that's going to take place in both of your lives that's going to bring extension into your life. Extension into your life. I see that extension, the word extension. Extension, extension. I'm opening up the door that has been closed for a long time. And I'm establishing an extension into your family. And I'm bringing an extension. You'll be amazed that I'm going to plant a miracle seed into your life, says the Lord. Father, I commit them into your hands. Let them move prophetically and evangelistically. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Just me. Just me. You know, uh, for saying G9, uh, many a times we think of ministry in different ways. It can be bombastic, you know, signs and wonders and all that follow. But, you know, I, I give you a very simple thing. I've got other things for you, but I give you a very simple thing in ministry. It's called a towel. And uh, never let it leave your sight. Carry it. Sometimes we carry a staff, we carry a sword. But amazingly, this, this thing is so much more powerful than most of all the other man-made stuff. So I present you this, a towel. But trust me, it's a powerful thing. It's a powerful thing. And I think the children have got something for you, both. Uh, Christmas came early. It's Hari Raya lights. It's... The bouquet was bigger than Rahul. You know? Yeah, so vegetables will get healthy. This is... Uh, don't preach. What did you say? Preach the word. And this is something that should never leave your side as well. So he's, he, he he's, will need help to carry stuff. So, church, will you stretch out your hands? And as we set in today, Lord, we thank you for Pastor Fusing and Pastor Chinai. We thank you. And let the, as what Pastor Rajan prayed, let that mantle fall upon them today. Let that mantle come upon them, upon the church, as we look forward to a season of growth, of deepening, of loyalty, of faithfulness, of fruitfulness. Lord, of, of being filled by your spirit and encountering your spirit. Father, we thank you, O oh God. Lord, we can predict the future, but you hold the future. You dictate the future. You decide it. So we commit our lives to you. We commit the entire future into your hands. And we say, your kingdom come. Your will be done. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.